Your Honor, yes, I have slept with other people and I have gave oral sex to other men, but it's not. Oh, no big deal. We weren't in a steady relationship, Your Honor. So, uh, sleeping with other people himself, he was in and out as he pleases. Well, she didn't want to go to the movies. That's a lie. She wanted to go straight to the hotel. Oh, really? Oh, really? Okay. That's how she wanted That's to do lie. it. That's a lie. Mr. Brooks, did you know this younger woman had a crush on you? When no. You, you know what I mean? You know, holding down, I mean, just really improper. So is that true? No, Ms. it's Wilson? not true. I was kissing my coworker, but not making love. There's a difference. I think I would have been arrested for that, I'm pretty sure. Making love in the club. In the latest episode of As the World Turns, or rather as the drama unfolds, Ms. Sanchez has thrown down the gauntlet, claiming Mr. Guzman is playing hide and seek with paternity of their daughter, neglecting them faster than a teenager dodges chores. She's seeking the paternity test results and childcare costs, alleging Mr. Guzman has a VIP list that unfortunately doesn't include their child as he drifts in and out of their lives like a bad Wi-Fi signal. On the flip side, Mr. Guzman, in a plot twist worthy of a telenovela, defends himself against these spicy allegations, accusing Ms. Sanchez of turning their love story into a mystery novel with a side of infidelity. He's even brought a witness to support his claim, turning the courtroom into the latest hotspot for drama enthusiasts. And just when you think you've seen it all, the saga takes another wild turn. Keep your eyes peeled for what's next. The drama is far from over. Ms. Sanchez, you claim that the defendant, Mr. Guzman, plays a dis hearing act when it comes to your child. You say he not only doubt he is your daughter's father, but he constantly puts other women before her and he drifts in and out of your lives. Yes. And today, you are seeking the results of a paternity test to try to get him to step up and act like a father and a real man. Yes. You are also requesting the court award $544.50 in child care costs for his half of your daughter's expenses. Can your heart handle more twists? Did you catch that jaw-dropping moment? In a plot twist worthy of a daytime soap opera, Ms. Sanchez drops the bombshell that she's been multitasking in the romance department, taking seeing other people to Olympic levels. This revelation doesn't just thicken the plot, it turns the paternity question into a full-blown mystery novel, with Mr. Guzman playing detective. As the judge squints, trying to untangle this human knot, Ms. Sanchez defends her free-spirited love life, insisting the committed relationship box was never checked on her relationship status. The next reveal is poised to shake up everything we thought we knew. What's next might just redefine the word shocking. Your Honor, yes, I have slept with other people and I have gave oral sex to other men, but it's not- Oh, no big deal. <laughs> we weren't in a steady relationship, Your Honor. Ms. Sanchez, you're saying that you had sexual extracurricular activities, we'll yeah. call them, but you were in a committed relationship. No, he was uh, sleeping with other people himself. He was in and out as he pleases. There would be a time he'd leave for a month and go love a girl and be in a steady relationship. Just when you thought it couldn't get any wilder, brace yourselves for what's coming. Then there's Mr. Joe Guzman, stepping into the courtroom spotlight like a surprise guest star, with a tale of Ms. Sanchez's rendezvous at a party that sounds like it could have been lifted from a spy novel. According to him, she wasn't just grabbing a quick chat with another man. No, they were holed up in a room for what could have been a mini-series binge-watch session. The judge, however, isn't buying popcorn for this show, questioning the weight of this testimony given Ms. Sanchez and Mr. Guzman's relationship roller coaster. The intrigue is about to escalate, with twists that promise to leave us on the edge of our seats. The curtain's about to rise on an even more Astonishing act. I'd like to add that I went to a party and I witnessed her walk into a room with another guy. She Why went in the room. Your business? She locked what the I door. Do she was in there business. for a good 30, 45 what minutes. I do you know, is Mr. Guzman, is it your testimony that you've witnessed Ms. Sanchez at a party walk into yes. a room with another man yes, for 30, 30, 45 30, 45 minutes, minutes and then minutes. emerge during the time that she's supposedly in a relationship with your brother? Um, she said she wasn't, said that they were on a break, but when are they not on a break? The drama intensifies beyond imagination, as the judge lays into Mr. Guzman for turning their daughter's paternity into public debate club material. It's clear this isn't just about legalities, it's about a little girl caught in the crossfire. Ms. Sanchez, on the verge of auditioning for a tearjerker with her real-life woes, points out Mr. Guzman's cameo appearances in their daughter's life story. Amidst the courtroom drama, it's the emotional wreckage left in the wake of their battles that stands center stage, with Ms. Sanchez's tears as the heartbreaking close-up. And just when you think it couldn't get more intense, the next scene takes it up a notch. Believe me, you won't want to miss what's coming next. It's going to be epic. I came from a family that my mother raised us herself. He came into my life as my best friend. When things were going on in the home, he would take me out. He was my security. If you can't do it, then let me know. Stop playing games with my heart and telling me I want to be a family man and then walk out on me and my kid. When he wants to come and be Mr. Family Man, it's okay. But then he sits there, hey, I'm not your daddy. He's turned to my daughter and told her. In a courtroom, buzzing with more energy than a high school 
school reunion, the DNA test results sizzle into the atmosphere like popcorn in a microwave. The judge, channeling the gravity of a monk hosting a game show, proclaims with a dramatic pause. When it comes to four-year-old Michaela Guzman, Mr. Guzman, you are her father. I told you, and look at everything you missed out on. Are you serious? I have to deal with her now? Oh, you're, you don't want to do anything. I have one kid, and I have another. This is great. We kick off with Miss Smith, spinning a tale of youthful infatuation turned life-altering event with Mr. Brooks, the unsuspecting defendant. She humorously details their fleeting Romeo and Juliet moment that inexplicably ended up in a less romantic setting, a motel room, leading to her pregnancy. She claims Brooks has been playing a game of denial, harder than a toddler playing hide-and-seek, refusing to acknowledge their son, Jimmy, as his own. Just when you think it can't get any more dramatic, hold on for Mr. Brooks's side of the story. You think this is wild? Just wait for what's next. That your teenage crush on the much older defendant defendant led you to becoming pregnant more than two decades ago. You say Mr. Brooks has denied fathering your son, Jimmy, ever since. And today, you want to prove he is Jimmy's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, you claim you had no knowledge of this pregnancy or its resulting child until Jimmy was 12 years old. You say Miss Smith was seeing other men around the time of her conception and there's no way you could be the father. Is that correct? All right. Hold on to your hats, folks. Mr. Brooks comes in swinging with denials as strong as a soap opera villain's alibi, insisting he was as unaware of the pregnancy as a cat is of fiscal responsibility. He challenges the claim with the skepticism of a conspiracy theorist, questioning how a single night of teenage folly could result in him being a dad, especially given Miss Smith's alleged romantic entanglements with others. The next twist? Miss Smith's side of the story gets even more complicated. If you thought this was a tangled web, the plot only thickens from here. Well, she didn't want to go to the movies. That's a lie. She wanted to go straight to the hotel. <laughs> Really? Oh, really? Okay. That's how she wanted That's to a do lie. it. Mr. Brooks, did you know this younger woman had a crush on you? When no. You, you didn't? No. You're lying. So why would you even ever ask her out? Well, we were just flirting with each other. And um, I asked her, uh, you want to go hang out? She didn't decide where she wanted to go at, so I said, well, let's go to the hotel somewhere just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier. The tale takes a twist when Miss Smith recounts her discovery of being pregnant and her attempts to inform Mr. Brooks, who seems to have been as elusive as a unicorn at that time. She paints a picture of her efforts to reach him, including a bizarre mix-up where the courts declared Mr. Brooks as prematurely joining the choir invisible, sparking a comedy of errors only matched by a sitcom plot. But you won't believe what happens next when social media enters the scene. Strap in, because the drama escalates in ways you won't see coming. He's lying, you're on. When Jimmy was 12 years old, we found out that Kevin Brooks was deceased. Well, who told really? you I was, I was deceased? We went to court because I was who getting told the military. You I was deceased? The courts in, in where we was in Virginia ran that they have to have both parents involved before they could give any guardianship to another family member. So when I gave them Kevin Brooks' name and they, the court system had to run it through the system, birthday and all, it came back that Kevin was deceased. And Jimmy was 12 years old. I would go back and forth home to New Orleans to look for him because I didn't believe that he was deceased. The saga takes an unexpected turn. After what felt like eons, Miss Smith decides to shoot Mr. Brooks a friend request on social media, reigniting old flames, or at least old debates. Their chats are a roller coaster of remember when and but what about Jimmy moments, with Brooks playing the role of Houdini, magically denying any ties to paternity or past entanglements. But the real shocker is yet to come when Jimmy steps into the fray. The next revelation is something straight out of a movie script. Through social media, and Kevin did give me his phone number and I gave him mine, and we was talking about arranging to meet so his son could see him. And during all our conversations, be, be truthful about it, we was talking about, you know, other things, about what if this wouldn't have happened when I was younger, how would it would have turned out with us if we would have been in a, a real relationship. And I did have feelings for Kevin, even though I didn't know him, but he's my child's father, so yeah, that conjured up some old feelings. This story takes yet another dramatic twist. Enter Jimmy, sharing his side of the tale, which feels like a soap opera minus the evil twin. Growing up fatherless, he's been piecing together the mystery of Mr. Brooks, a man more elusive than a Bigfoot sighting. The climax? A paternity test showdown, where Brooks pulls a classic sprinter move, bolting from the truth faster than Usain Bolt from the starting blocks. It's a tale of dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge when it comes to fatherhood responsibilities. The climax of this saga is just around the corner, and it's something you don't want to miss. The stage is set for a finale you'll have to see to believe. I'm like, what? why are you tweaking? Yes, so, he wanted to come to Virginia with us. And I was going to give him that opportunity just so he can have a relationship with his son and his granddaughters. So, Mr. Brooks, 
How is it that you can go all of these years without providing anything for your son, a child that could be your son, only to then turn around and ask him to provide shelter for you? That's not true. That's so a lie. that didn't happen? That never happened. The big reveal. In this nail-biter of an episode, the envelope of truth finally cracks open, spilling the beans that Mr. Brooks is... It has been determined by this court. Mr. Brooks, you are the father. I told you. <laughs> I was a virgin. You are the father. Mom's like, she always looked out for me and made sure I was straight. I'm good. This, this is what I want to ask you, bro. This is the thing. I'm your father. I didn't just appreciate going along with the lies like that. And we can put that we can put that behind us with all the lies. I ain't worried about the lies no more. You my son, all right? You, you, you received that? Ms. Wilson accuses Mr. Phillips of infidelity and denying paternity of their daughter, Hope, and seeks a paternity test. Mr. Phillips counters, believing Ms. Wilson had an affair with a co-worker, Mr. Garcia, who he alleges is Hope's real father. The tension between their claims sets the stage for a heated courtroom battle. In an unexpected twist, the judge can't help but wonder if daytime TV has missed out on a golden storyline, as the courtroom turns into a scene straight out of a soap opera. You believe the defendant, Mr. Phillips, was always unfaithful to you and still holds a flame for his ex-wife. Yet you claim he is the one who's always accused you of cheating and he's repeatedly denied fathering your daughter. Yes, Your Honor the couple's relationship foundation is revealed to be non-committal, starting from a purely sexual relationship which led to severe trust issues. Their relationship's beginning, characterized by a lack of commitment, seemingly forecasted the challenges they faced later on, including accusations of infidelity and the dispute over Hope's paternity. This moment emphasizes the shaky grounds on which their relationship was built. Meanwhile, their friends place bets on the paternity test results, turning the whole affair into the world's least appropriate gambling event. We got together just having sex, and so when you build a relationship like That's that... That's pretty together. Yeah. <laughs> right. And when So you... it started off as a non-committal sexual relationship. Correct. Okay. And when you build a relationship like that from the beginning, of course, you're going to have extreme trust issues. And so seven years later, we never got over our trust issues. It was you couldn't go to the store without uh, accusing. We couldn't of some, go... someone else yes. of having sex or exactly. doing something. Exactly. So the relationship started with sex, and it ended because of sex. Mr. Phillips expresses his doubts about being Hope's father, citing a period of separation during which Ms. Wilson was allegedly unfaithful. A friend reports seeing Ms. Wilson being overly affectionate with another man in a club, which Mr. Phillips interprets as betrayal. This revelation adds a layer of complexity to the paternity question, highlighting Mr. Phillips' deep-seated doubts and mistrust. In a moment of dark humor, Mr. Phillips muses that perhaps a guest appearance on Maury would have been a more straightforward way to solve their paternity puzzle, contemplating the chances of hearing, you are not the father. We were separated at a of time and during that point of time she led me to believe that I was the only man that she, she was sexually involved with but she let me know she was doing the clubs and she was dating people but she was not sexually involved with anybody when one of my friends was inside the club with her she was making love in the club she was tongue kissing she was grappling she was going you know to the 10 with a guy making love making in love the club. in the club tongue all in the mouth you know what I mean you know holding down I mean just really in proper so is that true? No, Ms. it's Wilson? not true. I was kissing my coworker, but not making love. There's a difference. I think I would have been arrested for that. I'm pretty sure making love in the club. She was so four I was, I in the was club. four playing in the club. Yeah. Ms. Wilson and Mr. Phillips discuss the possibility that Mr. Garcia, Ms. Wilson's co-worker, could be Hope's father due to their close relationship and physical resemblance to Mr. Phillips' biracial son. This segment reveals the intertwined personal and professional relationships that complicate the paternity dispute, shedding light on the emotional turmoil both parties experience. In a twist that seems straight out of a soap opera, the paternity puzzle adds another layer of drama to their lives, turning everyday encounters into episodes of Who's Your Daddy? And you think he's the father? Yes, I do. Because I have a son that is Mexican black and a she's biracial identical child. to my son. They are twins. So you have a child that's biracial? Yes, I do. And you say this child resembles your child so it leads you to believe that this child is as well? Because... That's his imagination. Even if I did sleep with the, the man in question, it was my business, not his. We were not together. And I just want to let him know that. But, you know... All right, this just... court isn't about 
the narrative shifts to the couple's troubled past, including Ms. Wilson's provocative behavior and Mr. Phillips' admitted promiscuity, which sowed seeds of distrust. Their unconventional start, marked by a booty call arrangement and infidelity, underscores the dysfunction that plagued their relationship from the outset. This part of the episode reveals the depth of their personal issues, making the paternity test even more crucial for resolution. It's like they've accidentally signed up for a reality show where the prize is finding out who gets to pay child support. I told him, of course, that I got pregnant, and I understand the way that he feels because me and Sam did work together. We stayed in the same apartment complex. We took trips together. So I understand, you know, his concern, but... So that's your co-worker? That's my co-worker, correct. But you she... admit from kissing on him yes. in the club, you admit to going on vacation yes. with him, you admit to hanging around with him, yes. you lived in the same apartment complex. Yes. The couple attempts to commit to each other after discovering Ms. Wilson's pregnancy, moving in together for a fresh start only to face challenges, including Mr. Phillips' unresolved feelings for his ex-wife. Discoveries of his ex-wife's belongings in their new home ignite further distrust, underscoring the difficulties of leaving past relationships behind and starting anew. This moment emphasizes the complexities of their attempt to form a stable family unit amidst ongoing personal baggage. They're trying to blend their lives together, but it's turning out to be more like a recipe for disaster than a smoothie. And then what happens? Um, I was supposed to move back in with my mother, but my mother knew of his lifestyle and wanted me to completely just not have anything to do with him on that level. And so when my mother found out that I would still have something to do with him, she put me out. So when I was telling him that she put me out, he allowed me to come and move in with him. And then this is where everything gets committed and real. Mr. Garcia's entrance into the courtroom introduces a new dynamic, as he denies being Hope's father and reveals he's gay, which, if true, would invalidate Mr. Phillips' suspicions. His testimony brings a surprising twist to the case, challenging the assumptions and accusations that have fueled the paternity dispute. This development adds an unexpected layer to the narrative, questioning the reliability of appearances and assertions made in the courtroom. Suddenly, the courtroom feels more like a daytime TV drama than a legal proceeding, with gasps, whispers, and the occasional I knew it echoing off the walls. Mr. Garcia's bombshell not only throws a wrench into the proceedings, but also has everyone re-evaluating their office pool bets on the case outcome. The judge, trying to maintain order amidst the unfolding soap opera, can't help but adjust his glasses, wondering if he accidentally walked onto the set of a telenovela. Amidst the chaos, the court stenographer silently thanks the universe for her typing speed, knowing this is one story that'll be talked about at every family dinner, from here to eternity. I'm gonna go up to the witness stand up there. Hello, Mr. Garcia. Thank you for joining us today. We're here regarding the paternity of young Hope, Ms. Wilson's daughter. You were kissing in the club? I was. Were we you kissing? kissing? She was showing me how to kiss. I'm a good teacher. I'm a yeah. good teacher. And then And she really showed me how to kiss. So yeah. you were at school getting a lesson. That is correct. Yes, I was getting you a lesson. weren't really kissing her. It was a lesson. It was right. a lesson. She was teaching me. So your kissing. lips were interlocked yes. in the club. The lips, tongue, tongue and everything. Yeah. It was more than lips, it was tongue acting. You also admit to going on vacation with We went to Vegas, yeah. We slept in the same room. Do you love Miss Wilson? No, she's a friend. A close friend. Do you believe that you're the father of her child? I am not the father of her. Diamond is the father of the child. I'm the big reveal of the paternity test is like the final scene of a wacky sitcom. Picture this. Mr. Phillips is on the edge of his seat. The suspense is thicker than the plot of a soap opera. The drum roll, please. And bam. When it comes to baby Hope Phillips and whether Mr. Phillips or Mr. Garcia is her father, Mr. Phillips, you are her father. <laughs> <laughs> It seems as if these results really meant a lot to you. What are you feeling? Yeah. <laughs> it's the best day of my life.